Pakistan is the epicenter of the global Islamic Jihad movement now, of Al-Qaeda, of the Pakistan Taliban, of Lashkar-e Taiba, all the groups that are now coalescing around a simple anti-American message that America is the enemy of the Islamic world. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at the issues behind the news. This week, the war against terrorism. As the failed Times Square bombing attempt has illustrated, plots meant to terrorize U.S. citizens are growing more frequent. The security of our cities, our skies, and even our military bases has been breached, and experts say more attacks are almost certain. The administration's top priority is to keep the nation safe, but it's no easy task. Maintaining America's safety will take more than increased homeland security measures and military action in terrorist breeding grounds, says Foreign Policy Senior Fellow Bruce Rydell. Bruce, Secretary Clinton says that the next act of terrorism in this country is going to be postmarked Pakistan. Is that a fair assessment? Secretary Clinton knows that the epicenter of the global Islamic Jihad, the movement to attack the United States that al-Qaeda is at the core of, is in Pakistan. And the Times Square missed attack was a wake-up call, that that epicenter of terror is still pouring out more and more terrorists all the time. What we've seen is the ideology of al-Qaeda, global Islamic Jihad, is now spreading beyond al-Qaeda into the mainstream of a bunch of Pakistani Islamist groups, Lashkar-e Taiba, the group that attacked Mumbai in November 2008, and now the Pakistani Taliban, the group that provided Faisal Shahzad the training for his attempt to set off a car bomb in Times Square just a few weeks ago. Well, explain for me, if you would, uh, the impact of the U.S.-Pakistani relationship on this whole terrorism issue. Our relationship with Pakistan is very conflicted. We're trying to develop a strategic relationship with the Pakistani government. But the Pakistani government is a weak civilian government. Real power remains in the hands of the Pakistani military and the Pakistani intelligence service, the ISI. And our relationship with Pakistan has been conflicted now for more than a half a century. We've oscillated wildly between periods of intense love affair, usually with Pakistani dictators, and ugly divorces. It's been up and down for 60 years. The conclusion Pakistanis have drawn from this is that America is not a reliable ally because much of Pakistan's behavior is derivative of its concerns about India. As the president gets ready to go to India sometime in his first term, trying to resolve Indo-Pak tensions is one of the most critical issues facing this administration. What's, what actually spawned the anti-USA sentiment going around the Muslim world? There's a number of issues that have alienated the Islamic world from the United States. The wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, the Palestinian question, all of these lie at the heart of the alienation of the Islamic world from the United States. The Obama administration has been trying to change that with the president's speech in Cairo, with his reach out to the Islamic world. In large parts of the Islamic world, we're seeing some positive response to that. In Pakistan, we're seeing no positive response. Pakistan, almost uniquely in the Islamic world, remains a hotbed of anti-Americanism. What is the USA doing about terrorism? We're trying to have a political dialogue, a strategic dialogue with the Pakistani government. We're trying to increase our economic assistance, and the Obama administration has tripled economic assistance to Pakistan over the last year. And we're trying to work with the Pakistani army to give them the kind of equipment they need to fight insurgents and militants. But we're fighting a bedrock of distrust and mistrust that has developed over 60 years and which is exacerbated by the CIA drone attacks on Pakistani territory along the border with Afghanistan. Bruce, there are reports that Pakistan, the Pakistani government, actually has a relationship with many or some of these terrorist cells. So is Pakistan playing both sides against the middle, the U.S. against the terrorists? What the Pakistani army is trying to do is selective counterterrorism, move against some groups while retaining ties to others. 
In part, this is because the Pakistanis don't expect the United States to tough it out in Afghanistan. They expect that come 2011, we're going to start a drawdown and that they're going to find themselves at the end of the day still dealing with the mess next door in Afghanistan, still facing a hostile India on their other border, and seeing these groups as useful assets for all of these struggles over the long term when America has long since left the region. Should Americans anticipate yet another attack on U.S. soil? I think it's almost a certainty that we're going to see additional attacks like the attempt at Times Square coming from Pakistan. The Pakistani government is not strong enough, at least at this point, to crack down on those. It's going to be a long-term struggle. We should anticipate continued attacks from these groups in Pakistan. And if one of them succeeds and capability follows intent, uh, we're going to have a very severe crisis with Pakistan. That's why we need to encourage Pakistan to do more now so that we don't have that kind of confrontation in the future. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again next week. I'm Gigi Hinton. At Brookings is produced by the Brookings Institution. To learn more about the issues discussed on At Brookings, visit our website at brookings.edu.